Okay, so oh. this that we've been doing relates to adding the icon and adding the splash screen. This is the part where it's relatively easy to teach how to do it because it requires a little bit of the code and it requires a graphic. Well, the graphic part of it could be pretty complex. That's graphic design and that's making a nice icon and such. Let's go look at the official Android documentation, which has some guidelines. Because every operating system has a style. If you look at the, the icons and the animation that happens when you use an Android phone and compare it to an iPhone phone or a Windows phone, they all have their own kind of style. Uh, I've had a Windows phone and it relied a lot on, on animations that would flip. Uh, here, like on Android and iOS, you kind of slide a little bit more. You also kind of get the effect of parallax sometimes. Like on, on my iPad, if I kind of rotate and tilt around my phone, I kind of see it at different angles, so to speak. So each one has its like style, its own, its own aesthetic. So if we go look at the official documentation for Android, Let's go to developer.android.com, developer.android.com. Google, the ones behind Android, will tell you, if you're going to design an app for Android, here's some guidelines that might be useful for you when thinking about color choices, icon sizes, fonts, so that it feels like an Android app. What we've done is we've specified one icon to be used on all platforms. We could specify an icon only for Android, only for iOS. We could design an interface that looks the same on all platforms. That's easier for us. Or we could take the extra effort to design an interface, basically a CSS file for iOS, a CSS file for Android, a CSS file for Windows, and then each platform has its own design. We'll address that later. But for the moment, let's go look at the design portal. Design is all about the graphics of your app. Develop is all about the coding of your app. And distribute is about getting it to people. We will look at the distribute app, distribute screen later. And we don't need to deal too much with develop because we're doing it via Cordova. In develop here, this assumes you're doing it in Android Studio. We're doing it via Cordova, so we won't spend much time there. But we will under distribute and design. And here it's the big official manual under design about how to use material design, which is their official name for the style of Android. Um, the pre one of the previous styles, I believe, was called Halo. And it had, if you've used Android for a while, remember when it was all about glows and drop shadows, and chrome, and shininess, and futurism, and Tron style. And then now it's flat. Now it's about simpler design that is not so cluttered. There's still some subtle drop shadows and such. And I, and I have here this older device that is a little bit of a mixture of the old design and the new design. And I can see it right away where some of these icons look like from four years ago. When, when that style was cool, and now I see some of the newer icons with flatter design. You might see that too. Let's see what we can look at. Uh, let's see, introdu introducing. Um, it, it, is it really interesting article here about their concepts like they're going to tell it to you like any good graphic designer. They're going to tell it to you. They're going to sell it to you like about a lifestyle and about a feeling and a culture and all of that. And that has value, of course. Aesthetics have value. Uh, if I'm not a graphic designer, I don't, I don't care. But looking at these sorts of things like bold, motion provides meaning. It's explaining from a deeper level about why does this icon look like this? Why is the color like that? Why does it behave a certain way? Um, I wanted to show there is a spot somewhere, I think it's under downloads, where it even gives you color palettes and such. Yes? Is there a PDF format that you can download instead of doing it from the, uh, 
maybe somewhere deep somewhere there's like one PDF that encompasses everything, but I sort of feel that it's strewn all over the place. Yeah. If we look at downloads for designers, we can look here and we have, for example, a color palette. Uh, color swatches. We can see what it looks like before downloading the color. This is going to tell you about color palettes. Okay, here we go. So if you want to see something like this, these are like the official Android colors. If you want a certain shade of a certain color, here it is. Here's its formula to use in, the, in your app. It's found under downloads, and then it's found inside of color. For more info, go read the color article. So I'm seeing, for example, if I want to use certain colors, these are the official color formulas. I'm free to use any colors I want, of course. We did that. We went into Photoshop, did whatever we wanted. But if I wanted to kind of feel, behave, or have a style of an official Android app, well, I need to maybe hone in on some of these official colors. I want a blue. Well, this blue right here, number 500, will work. I have all of these shades talks about color schemes using material design. Example of color palette using two purple hues from the primary palette and one accent. So they've chosen to use these three colors with some variation in their app. This main color, accent color, main color. These are the deeper concepts of graphic design which are out of the scope of our class. But if you've taken the IMCP class and other design classes, this might make sense. Let's see, primary color, it's saying choose a color that should be the most widely used color throughout your project. Use a secondary color. We've had accent colors like this. So uh, the primary color stands out there for other little things. That's the that's the color here. This means it's not turned on, it's gray. This means it's turned on, it's the accent color. This is an action. I can click on that to do something. This is a lot about concept. Here's do, here's don't. Only use the accent color for body text to accent a web link. Don't use the accent color for body text. Well, why? So that's their whole aesthetic, that's their whole design. It, I've been following the design of the, I, the Android operating system and the iOS operating system and the Windows operating system for a few years. I've seen it grow and change. You've probably seen it yourself. Every time you wake up overnight and suddenly your phone's been updated because you've got a brand new operating system and a brand new style and all of that. And I remember seeing, like for iOS, uh, you know, love them or hate them, but you know, the iPhone did change things. Um, they're going to celebrate 10 years this year, 10 years of the iPhone, and I remember seeing a lot more gradients and a lot more like rounded shapes and like three-dimensional buttons, and now it's flat. And um, so here, these design choices are there for a reason to kind of everyone be on the same page. If you're going to have a certain color to be a link, don't make everything that color, because then it looks like the whole thing's a link. Right here, there's not enough contrast, especially on my projector. These two shades are too similar. This blends, you may want that style, but you should have a separate color for a separate button so it stands out and it, it looks like it's clickable and you can interact with. Let's go on and on, and it'll explain all of that. If we look on the left side menu, you will look at icons. This will even tell you down here, give you some sizes. The way they designed the, the newest Gmail icon in the Google headquarters is that they, they designed it with real paper. Someone got real paper, they cut it out, they put the shapes together, they put a light on it, and they said, that, let's create that digitally. And this is very common. 
uh, to use like a real world material to make a digital thing. Uh, like a lot of these uh, modern video games, people create a statue, a real statue of the character, and maybe scan it into the computer, render it, but starting with a physical thing to make a virtual thing so that the virtual thing feels more real. So based on that real thing, they see where the shadows fall, and then they made that icon. I never really felt that this flap was kind of pointed up, like in the real one, but that was there to kind of guide the shape. See from there to there. From the original physical prototype, how does it look with light? Starting to set it up digitally, final version. Final version has a little corner there where the original had a circle around it. And it just goes on to really detail it. grids and geometry and all of that. I saw a video in here at one point where it kind of animated them creating things. And if you've got an icon, well, you see an, an icon in the design, but what's happening is there's a background element with a shadow and the original element and an overlay. It's all constructed in perspective to achieve the, those uh, uh, designs. So this might be way more info than you, than you really need, but the point of looking at the official documentation is to get a sense of this stuff has been thought about, this stuff has been put together to help you as a designer create a professional looking app that looks good on Android. I would recommend for you at some point browse the documentation here. You don't have to you know, follow it step by step or at all, that's okay, but looking at the official documentation of design could help you make a nice app. Like, look at how some of these color palettes are put in here for us. If I want a feeling of hot, these are some colors to choose from. If I want, you know, warm or fresh, whatever fresh means, it's going to be these blues and greens, the blue-gray, even something like this. It's saying, do this, but not that. I don't think that's bad, but it's, it's against their design principles. So they say, don't make icons that look like that. Center them. Of course, you can break the rules whenever you want. So I just wanted to show you that. And you can get something like that also at developer.apple.com at developer.windows.com. You can go off to all the official design, all the official documentation per operating system, and they will tell you, here's what our, our iOS flat design aesthetic is like. Use a drop shadow like this, use colors like that, etc. This goes on and on and on and on. It even talks about the icon shapes. Let's see right here, this is the attention to detail. Here's uh, two units here, use two units here, use two units here to design consistency. So um, we're going to wrap up the main lecture at this point. Uh, we've covered these concepts of adding these graphics to our, our template. Uh, when we come back next time on Tuesday, we're going to then start to uh, work with uh, the actual app. We're going to start to get back into HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I think at this point we've set up our basic template pretty well, and the whole concept of that is that our project is completely in that folder, which I currently have called template09. So our whole project is this. From this, when it makes copies, it's a new app. It's a starting point. It has a splash screen. It has an icon. It has some stuff in the config file. From that, we will then start to develop our 
our real app next time. I'll put a copy of my project in the folder. You can take it. We'll do some lab time. When we come back, we'll get back.